Tonight on Connecticut's news station, body camera footage capturing the moment police shoot and kill a man in his home. We're unpacking what happened and having experts weigh in on how police responded. In an hours long standoff at a home in West Hartford ends peacefully. We're finally learning new details about what started that standoff. Over a month later and police in Westport say they've arrested one final person in a brazen carjacking all caught on camera. We'll bring you up to speed on the case. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And we begin tonight in Wallingford on body camera footage showing a man being fatally shot by police in his home. As we continue to unpack exactly what happened, experts are weighing in. Thanks for joining us for the news at 10. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. The incident started with officers being called to the scene, told the man had shot himself. Yeah, Fox 61's Gabby Molina has been pouring over the body camera footage all day, and she joins us now in studio to break it down. Gabby? Brent and Sarah, both officers involved, are now on administrative duty, as is protocol when a law enforcement officer is involved in a use of deadly force incident. Now investigators will try to piece together exactly what led up to that shooting. Newly released body cam footage, giving more insight into what happened early Monday morning at a home on North Airline Road in Wallingford. Officers were called there around 2.30 a.m. for a report that a man had shot himself in the face. When officers arrived, they found 62-year-old Donald Passmore in his bedroom. Video from officers Gordon McCaskill and Robert Bellucci's body cams shows them speaking to him from the doorway. You know, what are you gonna go? What of you are gonna go? According to the Office of the Inspector General, the officers spoke to him for about nine minutes and instructed him not to touch his gun. Put your hand in front now! Keep it where we do not touch the gun! Get your hand in front of you now! We've paused the video here, but that's when at least one of the officers fires his weapon. It's not clear if both officers fired. The inspector general says approximately 10 rounds were fired. Shots fired, shots fired. Afterwards, a 22 caliber revolver was found on the bed. Police officers are, shoot, are taught in an instance where they feel that their life is in danger to shoot for center mass to try to de-escalate the problem. Bobby McDonald is a retired Secret Service agent and a lecturer for the Criminal Justice Department at the University of New Haven. After watching the footage, he says it's helpful for officers to know there's a weapon when they go into a situation like this. The fact that they know that there's a gun in there potentially is going to heighten their awareness of what the dangers are that they're going into. The Office of the Inspector General is now investigating, an office recently established in 2021 for incidents like this one. A totally unrelated uh, entity within the state of Connecticut that is not attached to any particular state's attorney's office or any police department. Now that man, Passmore, he was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The chief medical examiner says Passmore died of gunshot wounds to the torso. In the studio, Gabby Molina, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Gabby, thank you. The inspector general's office also released body camera video from the deadly Hartford police shooting. Yeah, that shooting also happened Monday afternoon around Westland and Barber Streets. One man was killed. Fox 61's DeAndrea Turner joins us live from Hartford Police Headquarters tonight with that video. DeAndrea. Hi, Brent and Sarah. Well, I talked to community leaders on Hartford's North End today about that body cam video being released. Pastor AJ Johnson tells me that this shooting is still leaving a lot of community members shaken up. You might not have started out where you needed to be, right? But you are exactly where you are supposed to be. That's the word Pastor AJ Johnson taught his congregation at Bible study Wednesday night. The same day body cam video was released of the fatal officer involved shooting that ended right in front of his church on Monday. The sentiment is folks and people are feeling like they're still living in constant fear. The shooting happening Monday afternoon around Westland and Barber Street, leaving 44 year old Jamie Grant dead. Newly released body cam footage shows the interaction between him and Hartford Police Officer Brian Sullivan during a routine traffic stop. The video shows Grant getting out of the passenger door and walking to the rear of the vehicle. Officer Solomon can also be seen getting out of his car and then the two approach one another. Video continues to show Grant raising a gun in the direction of the officer and firing. Officer Solomon responded by pulling out his service weapon and firing back. The video then shows Grant trying to run away while Officer Solomon fires his weapon multiple times, hitting Grant and causing him to fall on the street. It just goes to show you how quick something that may seem routine 
something that may have been a running a red light or running a stop sign can soon escalate into a serious situation with a firearm. And Pastor Johnson says this will still reverberate across the community with people feeling like they are just waiting for the next thing to happen. As much as it's a cut and dry situation, the trauma and after effects of what this has produced will continue to uh, ring on for the next couple weeks until we are, um, you know, the bandaid is ripped off with something else that potentially may happen. And Grant was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. That officer involved in the shooting wasn't injured. In Hartford, DeAndrea Turner, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, DeAndrea. We have an update now on a story we've been following all day. Police in West Hartford saying an hours long standoff on Crocker Avenue has ended peacefully. It all started just before 930 this morning. Police say they were conducting a welfare check on someone living in the home on Crocker Avenue. Police then set up in the area around the home while trying to communicate with the person. As of 730 this evening, they say they had uh, resolved the situation and cleared the scene. There have been no criminal charges filed against the person involved, but police are asking you to contact them if you have any information regarding the incident. And turning to the forecast now, we have one more nice fall day to enjoy before rain comes to inevitably kick off the weekend. I don't feel like we're giving any spoilers here. <laughs> it's just kind of, you know, we schedule it in now. Yeah. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now with the latest tonight. Hi, Rachel. Yeah, here we go again. Today was a mostly nice day, although I definitely thought those clouds were more stubborn than uh, we expected. We did have a little private rainstorm for southeastern Connecticut today. Some pouring rain for New London. County and just in New London County alone and even right now there are still some leftover showers here from Stonington and Mystic through North Stonington. They're on the way out of here finally and I think that everybody is dry heading through the day tomorrow before everybody sees rain heading into Friday. 54 degrees the current temperature in Waterbury close to 50 in Norwich. We'll see decreasing clouds tonight with overnight lows that'll be dipping back into the 40s to right around 50 degrees as we head towards daybreak tomorrow. Tomorrow is a brighter day. We'll see partly cloudy skies and likely the warmest day of this week with high temperatures climbing into the middle and even upper 60s. Enjoy while it lasts. We'll see rain come down off and on through your Friday. Some could be heavy at times and some of those showers lingering into your Saturday too. Your full forecast coming up. Rachel, thank you. And new at 10 tonight, a Hartford man was killed in a shooting over the weekend in Newport Town, Vermont, and his killer is still at large tonight. Vermont State Police responded to a call that a man, identified today as 27-year-old Wilmer Rodriguez, was shot in a home on Farrar Road. He was pronounced dead on the scene, and the coroner determined he died from gunshot wounds. Police have not identified a suspect in the shooting, but believe Rodriguez was targeted. They're asking the public for help and are inviting anyone with relevant information to give them a call. An update now on a case we've been following since last month. Westport police say they've made a final arrest in a brazen carjacking. The whole thing was caught on camera. 20-year-old Vincis Baez of Waterbury is now the fourth person to be arrested. Police say he was one of these people seen on this surveillance video. Multiple men stole an Aston in Martin Carr in the incident. Baez was released after an arraignment today on a promise to appear in court. He's due in Stamford Superior Court next month. Police say this is the last arrest they're expecting to make in the case. The ballot battle in Bridgeport returns to the courtroom Thursday. Testimony expected to resume tomorrow in the ongoing case regarding allegations of election fraud in the Bridgeport mayoral primary. On Tuesday, Mayor Joe Gannam took the stand to answer questions about what he knew regarding his campaign staff and how they handled absentee ballots. His primary opponent, John Gomes, is suing to have the results of the primary overturned, claiming ballots were mishandled and ballot boxes were allegedly uh, stuffed with absentee ballots to sway the vote in Mayor Ganim's favor. Also happening tomorrow, the White House has announced President Biden's planning to address the nation. The president will deliver a speech from the Oval Office talking about our nation's response to the Hamas terrorist attack and Russia's ongoing war against Ukraine. The address will begin at 8 tomorrow night. You can watch it right here on Connecticut's news station. We'll also be streaming it for you live on Fox61.com and on Fox61+.